Hello, I guess file to other kind of heat lesson has show a blasted garlic. I guess you show a heat flaccid and garlic. Welcome to this first lesson, uh, a garlic taster. Um, in this lesson, we'll be looking at uh, words that people may be familiar with already, um, a bit of basic uh, grammatical structures that are important in the language and also asking how people are and answering. So, if you'll pick in garlic agate, if you'll pick in garlic agate, do you have a bit of garlic? Although Gaelic may seem unfamiliar at first, it is an Indo-European language um, from the Celtic language family. And you may recognise uh, many words as coming from, either coming from Latin or coming from the same root as the Latin words, or more recently from an English root. But there are also many Gaelic words that have been borrowed into English, particularly into Scottish English. So I'm sure everybody will be a, familiar with the words falche, falche for welcome, and slanche, slanche, which is cheers or health, the Gaelic toast. Um, and people will see these all over the world in Irish bars. The thing to notice, um, uh, if these words were Irish, the accents would be pointing the other way. So, um, Certainly, since spelling reform, all Scottish Gaelic accents point this way. Falche, slanche. Linked to slanche, we have drama, drama, a dram, a dram of whiskey. Also, barged, barged, a bard, a poet. Notice the RD uh, or RT, you often get this S sound coming in in Gaelic. Barged. Barged. In Scotland, the mountains are often known as Ben, Ben Nevis, Ben Lomond. This comes from the Gaelic. Bain. Bain. Also, in the Highlands, we have Bothies. Um, kind of houses or sheds people would stay. So a bohan, bohan, a small house or shed outbuilding. On the top of mountains you may get a cairn, a carn, carn. Anybody who's been to Highland Games will have heard of tossing the caper, caper, caper. Is a big long stick, a pole. A Scottish country dance is known as a Cayley, a Cayley dance. In Gaelic, Cayley is the, a verb to visit, so not necessarily connected to, dan to dancing. You can Cayley um, on your neighbours or family just to visit them. Uh, in Gaelic, in English, we have the word clan. Um, clan, as in uh, family grouping in Gaelic, clown, clown, uh, and the meanings are slightly different in Gaelic, clown is children collectively. And notice the double N here is giving the A a bit of a W sound, so clown, own. Crag, if something's craggy, it's crick, crick, rock. The English word galore, um, whiskey galore, 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 um, plenty or enough. A gilly, a gilly. Uh, in Scottish English, certainly, as um, a kind of manservant who would work on an estate, um, somebody who um, perhaps hunts deer, um, fishes, keeps um, Highland estates running for their uh, rich landlords. Uh, Gille, Gille, and this basically means a boy, 
in Gaelic. Another Scottish landscape word, glen, the glens, valleys, glown, glown. And again, the A double N, glown. Gob, shut your gob. Um, gob is used in Scottish English, your mouth. Um, gob is a beak in Gaelic, gob. Something that appears in place names, Kyle, Kyle Lachalsh, um, cool, cool. The narrows, narrow piece of land. It's also the, it comes from the same root as the, the French place named Calais, yeah, the narrowing between France and the southern coast of England, Calais, cool. Um, you see it in Balachulish the town of the Straits, the Narrows. Loch is Loch, uh, just what we call a lake in Scotland, comes from the Gaelic, Loch. Tarmigan, a type of bird, Tarmachan. Tarmachan is the, the Gaelic words that gives us, gives us Tarmigan. I don't know why in English they stuck a P in the front of it. Uh, Shindig, Sheentig. Sheen tick, like jumping around. Uh, smashing, is smashing. Now this one's dubious. Um, there's some who would claim that um, is smashing, it is good, that's good, um, gives us smashing. Um, but this is in use across, um, across England as well and um, often hear people using it, um, perhaps posh people in England, um, but there is this, it's used an awful lot in places like Glasgow among working class people, so there is a, perhaps an opinion that um, the root of its use in places like Glasgow among, among the urban working class is the Scottish and Irish gales moving to the city and that it's come from a smashing. People have associated it with the English word smashing. Uh, any Outlander fans, um, Scots people often refer to the English as Sassanach. Um, and in the Outlander um, use in Scottish English context, this maybe has a negative connotation. Um, but in Gaelic, Sassanach is just somebody from England. It's the, the country is called Sassing. And people from there are called Sassanach or Sassanich um, collectively. Um, and the root of that word is like Saxon, basically. Sassen. Um, Sassenach. Saxon. Um, MD who follows Scottish politics will um, no doubt have heard um, the word Burach. A right mess. A Burach. Uh, so Burach in Gaelic. Burach. A right mess. Car, as in the vehicle you drive. Um, the English word car apparently comes from um, what the, the Gales in France called their chariots, carabat. Um, and that's what's given us the English word car. So in modern Gaelic, just car with an accent is a car or carabat for a vehicle, a wheeled, a wheeled vehicle. A shanty, a shanty house. Um, if anybody's heard that word, it's actually a kind of double uh, uh, a double meaning um, or a double use of the word house because shown is an old house so shown house would be an old house house uh, shanty house or a shown um, which probably this would have come from Irish Gaelic rather than Scottish but it's the same same word capel colle capel colle is a capercaillie a uh, particular type of forest dwelling bird that we have in the Highlands. And uh, Kulya is uh, a forest and Kapel is um, a, word, a word for horse anyway, a kind of forest horse of sorts. Uh, the word slogan in English um, comes from slugarum, slugarum, or slug is um, 
a crowd or a people um, folk and garum is a cry or a shout or a pronouncement so a, um, a cry out a call out to the to the crowd a slogan a claymore a scottish longsword cly more cly more um gives us the word claymore whiskey comes from ushkebehe particularly the ushke part ushke whiskey you can see where that's come about ushkebehe um this word ushke which gives us whiskey just means water so uh, the anglicization is just of the water part ushkebehe is the water of life um perhaps not many people will be familiar with this but in scotland we have the kilt um, and this is often called in Scottish English a philibig kilt um, to refer to the little kilt. Um, Fairyig big. Fairyig big is a small kilt, so a philibig um, is how that's come into Scottish English. Fairyig big. Brogue as a shoe um, and as part of your kilt outfit, you put on your brogues. Um, Brog, brog is a shoe. Brog in um, shoes in Gaelic, so the an to form the plural. Again, a kelly wearing your kilt, you might raise a quaich to have a dram. A quaich being the kind of ceremonial cup um, that you see often in kilt shops in Scottish paraphernalia shops. Cuach. Cuach uh, is just a, a vessel, a drinking vessel or any kind of vessel really. Cuach um, gives quaich. Again, part of your kilt outfit, you might hear the, the phrase a ski and do. A ski and do, a black knife. So ski and do is how it's spelt correctly here. Ski and do. Um, again, part of your kilt outfit, you'll put on your sporan. Or sporan, which is a purse, but a man's or a woman's purse. And um, in in Gaelic, you would use this word sporan to refer to your wall, your wallet, or your purse, um, as well as the thing you put around your waist for your kilt outfit. Um, trousers, again, this is um, come from uh, Gaulish, the the Gaelic peoples that lived in ancient France. Trues, it's apparently when the Romans were wearing togas, um, the Celtic peoples of France were wearing trues. Um, and you also get trues, um, T-R-E-W-S in Scottish Gaelic as um, particularly tartan trousers. So trues. Um, something that crops up in place names, Strath, um, Strathblane, Strathclyde, uh, Sra, Sra, and there's no T in the Gaelic spelling of that, although there is a bit of a T sound between the S and the R. Sra, and that's normally a gleung that has a river in it. Stra. Clachan, again, comes up in place names. Clachan is a kind of small highland township. Um, farming settlement. Machir, again this word's used in English to refer to the particular um, fertile sand you get in the Western Isles um, where you get um, flowers and whatnot so kind of grasses and flowers mixed in with sand is the Machir. Machir. Uh, it's also the name of a soap opera in BBC Alapa from the late 80s early 90s. Machir. And um, in Scots, Burns uses this word, sonse, your sonse face. Um, sonus, sonus, happiness, contentment, sonus. So, Anamanatje in Gaelic place names all over Scotland reflect um, the widespread use of Gaelic, the Gaelic language at one point. So, you see uh, place name element, ach. Achintoshin, Achinlech, um, 
Achig, Achig uh, is a field, and that's often just shortened to Ach or Ach. Achig is a field in Gaelic. Achter, uh, you see in place names, Achter Arder, Achter Machti, and this comes from Uachgud, Uachgud, which is the upper part of something. It's also a word for cream, the upper part of milk, I suppose. Um, Inyid, Inyid, which could be pronounced Inver, um, which gives us Inverness, Inverclyde, so a river mouth, a firth in Scottish English, um, an estuary in English. Inyid, uh, Dun or Dun, um, Dundee, Dumbarton, Dun itself is just uh, Dun, Dun. Um, drum, drum chapel, drum the drochich, uh, dream, dream, which is a ridge or a back, dream, uh, kill, as in Kilbride, Kilmarnock is keel, uh, churchyards, and kin in place names, kinloch leaven, kinloss, uh, this comes up an awful lot, kinloch. Kjown, Kjown, again A double N like we had in Gjown and a Kjown. Um, we also have Kjown, Kjown. So that's some words that you may or may not be familiar with um, and where they appear in Scottish place names and things related to Scottish culture anyway. So it's worth familiarising yourself with those. So on to the verb to be, um, and this is going to crop up an awful lot uh, in the language. So it's the kind of fundamental starting place in a way, um, particularly because Gaelic has no word for yes or no. So the verb to be or is, is used frequently because if you're asked a question with avel, the answer yes would be ha and no would be chanel. So you're going to be saying these three in different combinations an awful lot. This is also the only present tense verb in Gaelic, so allows you to talk about a huge range of simple sentences. So let's start with how are you? Kimid aha u. Kimid aha u. How are you? Kimid aha u. So how are you? We have u, you as the pronoun, ha the the verb to be, kemid how as the interrogative the question. You could also ask that as a um, you could also ask somebody are they well are you are you well, evel so using the question form of the verb evel u guma. Avel u ma, are you well, are you good? So that's where we have an interrogative particle, like a question word, how, kimir, or using the interrogative form of the verb to be, avel. So avel, are, question, to answer positively, ha, to answer negatively, Chaniel. Evel ha chaniel. So it's worth just repeating those. Um, and as we go through this, after I've said the sentence, it's worth repeating that out loud yourself. So Evel ha chaniel. Kimid aha u. Kimid aha u. Avel u guma. Avel u guma. Avel u ma. Avel u ma. So this is, you'll see both of these used in both the question and giving an answer. Hami ma, hami guma. Um, So 
So the ma is just an adjective. Uh, good. And guma, an adverb, well. So here we can see the basic ve verb subject order, uh, verb subject object order of the sentence structure, which is different from English, which is subject verb object. I am well would be the English. I is the subject. Am is the verb. And well, the kind of object, what you're saying about the subject. Uh, in Gaelic, it would be ha, so that's the verb, ha, me is the subject, and guma being the object, so verb, subject, object. Ha, me, guma. So this is the answer to either of these questions. Kimira ha, ha, me, guma. A villa guma. Ha, ha, me, guma. And we can also add taplat, taplat, which is a Gaelic for thank you. Kimira how? Ha mi kima, taplat. Or if we're not well and we're not wanting to lie, we can give a negative answer. We can say chanel. Eh, so here we can say chanel mi gudonna. I'm not bad, so you might not be quite good or well. But you might not be totally bad. So, Chaniel mi gudonna, I'm not badly. Chaniel mi donna, I'm not bad. Chaniel mi donna. Chaniel mi gudonna. And you could switch these around so you could say, Ha mi gudonna, I'm badly. Ha mi donna, I'm bad. Or, I'm not well. I'm not good. So you can use a positive answer or a negative. So if Kimira Ha U, Kimira Ha U is how are you? We can also ask how is he? or how a person is, how is Callum? We've already seen the pronouns for you um, and me, which are u for you and me for me, but here are the rest of the pronouns. So, me, u, e, i, shin, shiv, iat. Me, I or me, u, you, E, he, him, or it, and we'll come on to this shortly. Um, in Gaelic, nouns are either masculine or feminine, like in French and other European languages. So e or e can mean him and her. It can mean he and she, but they can also mean it as a masculine thing or it as a feminine. Sheen is we or us, shiv, you, um, which is either a plural you um, or a formal if you're being polite to somebody older than yourself perhaps, and iad, them. And you'll notice there's a few more in English here and that relate to these Gaelic words. So me is both I and me, Uh, e is he, him, and it. E, she, her, and it. Shin, we have we or us. So there's a few more in English where the Gaelic just doesn't change. It's always me, u, e, e, shin, shiv, iad. The pattern is the same with this. How are you? Kimir ha, u. So you can just swap out the pronoun u for any of these other pronouns to ask about any of these other people. So, kimir aha e, where the e is meaning either it as a masculine object or he as a person. Uh, and we could also take this out and swap it for a noun. So, kimir aha kalum. 
Kim ha Callum. Kim ha Callum. How is Callum? Kim ha eh. Kim ha Callum. How is he? How is Callum? So you'll notice that eh and e pronouns are both listed as it. This is because Gaelic eh, has gendered nouns, like other European languages. Objects are either masculine or feminine, and so are referred to as either he or she. And linguistic gender has got nothing to do with um, physical or genetic um, gender, uh, just as a feature of language. So these um, masculine and feminine nouns do not relate to masculine and feminine things. Um, the word borinach, woman, is masculine, so it doesn't follow sex, it just is a linguistic feature. This means we can use the same sentence to ask how something is. For example, the weather. Amishith. Amishith. Which is a feminine word. Or about the day. La. La. Which is masculine. Kimir aha and la. Kimir aha and la. Kimir aha and la. The answer to both Kimir aha Callum and Kimiraha and La would take the same pronoun, e, eh, because La is masculine, as is Callum. Ha, e, eh, ma, or Donna. So Kimiraha Callum, ha, e, eh, ma. Kimiraha and La, ha, e, eh, ma. Kimiraha Namisheth. What about the weather? How is the weather? Kimiraha Namisheth. So the answer to both a question about a female or a feminine noun, like Amishith, whether Kimiraha and Amishith would take the same form using the pronoun I, E, E, Ha, E, Fuad, it is cold, I, the weather is cold, Ha, E, Fuad, Ha, E, Blah, if we were to ask Kimiraha Ailey, as a female called Ailey, Kimiraha Ailey, Ha e Guma, Ha e Ma. So, where this is a feminine noun, like the weather is always discussed as a feminine concept, Ha Kimiraha Anamisheth, Ha e Fuer, it is cold, Ha Anamisheth Fuer. Ha anamishith, blah, hi blah. You can ask a question using evil and a pronoun like e or e. You can also add an adverb to make it more specific, such as anshin for there or andraste for just now. Eveli fuad andraste. A very food and draste. A very food and draste. Is she, is the weather, is it cold just now? A very food and draste. A very food and draste. A very blah and shin. A very blah and shin. Is it the weather? Is she warm there, as in a place? A very blah and shin. A very blah and shin. To simply answer yes or no, as as I mentioned, there's uh, no word yes or no in Gaelic, so we're responding to this question we've been asked, which is using the verb to be. So the answer yes or no will either be the positive is or the negative isn't. Uh, and this, this is a concept that does exist in other languages, even languages that do have um, words for yes and no. In Italian, for instance, there's a yes and a no word, um, C. Um, but it's more common in certain European languages to answer with the verb anyway, even though those words exist. So, did you run to the shops? I ran, would be the answer. Uh, did you get 
a new car I got would be the answer, yes. So this is a, um, a concept that's more commonly used in other European languages. It's not so common in English, but there are circumstances where it's done. I did. Did you do it? I did. I did it already. So you, you can answer with the verb in English. Uh, and as I say, it's more common in other European languages, but in Gaelic and Irish and Welsh, the Celtic languages, you have no choice. Uh, you answer with the verb. So, a very blah and shin. Ha. Ha i blah and show. Yes, it's warm. A very blah and shin. Chanel. Chanel i blah and show. So, I'm swapping and shin there for and show here. A very food in draste. Ha. Hai food in draste. A very food in draste. Chanel. Chanel i food in draste. Hi, blah. So, on this sheet, you'll see the vocabulary we've come, covered in this lesson with a few new words thrown in. Uh, as noted in the um, course plan, uh, plan of Hursa, uh, which is covered in a separate video, uh, these color codings tell you what part of speech each word is. So a purple box um, is either is a noun, so somebody's name is a proper noun. Uh, the, the day and the weather are nouns in the purple boxes. We have a question. The one question we've covered today is kimid, how. We have lots of adjectives here um, describing words. So food, food is cold. Blah, blah, for warm. If it's more than warm, if it's even more blah, it's che, che. Oh, ha i che. It's hot. Fluch, fluch, fluch. Or chidum, chidum. Dry. Dorache. Dorache. Or solid. Solid. Bright or clear. Dorache. Dark. Solid. Bright or clear. Bria. Bria. Beautiful. Grade. Grade. Ugly, nasty. So this can be used about a person or about the weather. Both of these words. So hi bria and you. Hi grand and you. Referring to the weather rather than a person called uh, rather than a female. Uh, as we saw, ma for good, donna for bad, scanyal, scanyal, uh, excellent, super, scanyal. Uh, it helps if you put a bit of emphasis into that to communicate the meaning. Oh, scanyal. It's excellent. Or maybe it's not scanyal. Maybe it's just kerst gulyod. It's right enough. It's okay. Kerst gulyod. Um, and some ad adverbs we have here. Uh, and you. Uh, uh, today. And you. So we can talk about the weather today. Ha i che and you. Ha i fluch and you. You heard me mention and show for here and shin for there. So evel i che and shin. Ha i che and show. Is it hot there? It is hot here. And draste, which is right now, just this minute. And draste, right now, just now. And guma, for well. Um, you can also have gudonna, badly. Uh, this gu that you see here is basically turning an adjective into an adverb. So in English, you would normally add ly. So bad 
is the English adjective. Badly is the adverb. So you add ly. Uh, in English, good and well are the uh, are the equivalent adjective and adverb. But in English, that's irregular, so it's not goodly. Um, it's well, uh, bad, badly, good, goodly. Donna, good Donna, ma, guma. So you can tend to add uh, gu to an adjective. So gusalyeth would be clearly. Um, um, so you can you can use this gu to form an adverb from an adjective if you're feeling confident. Um, we also have the verb that we covered today, ha, chaniel, and avel. Um, a name and yeah, the set of pronouns that we saw. So me, u, e, i, shin, shiv, iad. So you will get this lesson um, as a PDF. There's a link in the um, video description below. Um, you can download this lesson and you can print out this page and cut out these squares and play around with them to create a, a mix of different sentences. There's a good, um, a good range of sentences you can uh, create here, talking about either a person, a, per, a person called Callum, a person through a pronoun, or you can talk about um, the day or the weather, uh, either using the nouns themselves or the pronouns and the range of adjectives and adverbs we've covered today. Um, this is important to understand the, basically that the structures you see in a language are like formula and you can change the variables in those and be creative with them. Um, and the sooner you uh, have confidence to do that, the better. So it's good to have a really play around and see how you can make combinations work. Um, so, that's it for today. Tap life. Thank you all. Um, and we'll move on in the next lesson.